uh, our next talk uh, is by Facebook engineer Cooper Leaf, and he is going to be telling us about deploying an internal version of PyPI, the Python Package Index. Come on up here, Cooper. All right, give him a round of applause. Thank you. All right, that looks good. So yeah, my name's Cooper Lees. Uh, I have a very thick Australian accent, so if I get too excited or whatever, wave at me, tell me to slow down, speak proper English. Uh, we don't really do that. Uh, I've been at Facebook for probably about four, well not probably, have been at Facebook for four and a half years. Uh, I've been in many different teams, sort of started in like our firefighting SRO group. The infrastructure was in still a pretty messy back in 2012. Um, and so I went from that team and then I spent a lot of time in our network team, worked on our FBOSS open source switch uh, and IPv6ing a lot of things at, at Facebook and then recently Wukash talked me into joining the Python team and it's been a lot of fun sort of learning a lot more about Python and, and, and getting better at it. The main project that I was sort of brought on to do and I haven't got all the way there yet and we'll talk about it throughout this talk is at Facebook sort of if you, if you do Python it's very different to the outside world. Uh, the concept of virtual EMVs, um, using PyPI outside doesn't really exist. We sort of invented, if you've ever used the PEX format that's open source, we sort of use an internal version of that called PAR, and then uh, we have a sort of newer version called ZAR, but I won't go into that. And basically that's just a zip file that jams all your dependencies together and you can deploy it, it has a bit of a metadata around it and a shell script to, to run it. So we've, we sort of wanted to uh, and make our sort of um, internal stack uh, more like the outside world. And because we're doing that, it's awesome. You can come and work better. We are hiring as well. Um, and I have a wide range of jobs, all the way from an Instagram developer, all the way up to um, working in Facebook backend. There are WhatsApp jobs that use Python. So, and then there's even Oculus, where they're starting to do uh, crazy things on Windows and trying to use Python there, which is always good fun because they want our libraries just to magically work on Windows, which we know that doesn't always happen. So yes. The, the main page is facebook.com slash careers, Teams Instagram. Uh, Instagram.com slash careers goes to some weird uh, external uh, company called careers something. So it doesn't really work. They didn't save that uh, URL. So I'm sort of going to go through why we have a mirror inside uh, of Facebook now. We have multiple, but we'll go into that. Um, why? Because I'd say most people just point at the uh, CDN and, and use pypi.python.org. Is it .org? Yeah, it is. Um, sort of where we are today at Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. I'm going to focus more on Instagram because that's where I've spent most of my energy. Uh, because if you don't know that all the back end of Instagram is Python 3.6.2 and all uh, using a lot of open source projects on the outside, from the outside. And then I'll go on to sort of where we want to get to the rest of this year. So I, I expect most people here to know what PyPI is, but I thought I'd better put a slide in there and say PyPI is the Python Packaging Index. It's when you use pip, it's what pip goes and talks to. So when you do pip install click or pip install something, you'll go and hit the CDN. Now the CDN is nicely uh, hosted by Fastly. So the PyPI website's pretty quick all around the world and we all get to take advantage of it. There is a small core team that sort of look after that. Uh, and all the, the, the sort of files that uh, when you upload the PyPI, whatever, that all lives on Amazon in S3. And then it all gets spread around the world on, on um, Fastly CDN. Thank you, Fastly. Um, there is a new version coming out uh, that they're working on called Warehouse is its code name at pypi.org. Um, there's a whole lot of talks in the distutils mailing list about it. Uh, Donald Schaff and a few other guys are all working on that thing. So I expect that to ship, they're hoping, later this year, but after dealing with the Python packaging world, um, it's probably going to be next year. But you can sort of go and use it. So numbers I pulled on the weekend, uh, there's over 115,000 projects. A project is like Click or like PyOpenSSL, et cetera, et cetera. There's 7, 769,000 releases, so that's a lot. Uh, 988,000 files, a lot of users. Um, you can just go to the new PyPy.org and they, they give you these statistics up to date, which is pretty cool and I thought a little bit interesting. So my first question for all you out there, does anyone else here mirror PyPI internally? Shopkick does? You get, where, where do you work? Okay, and yourself? Phantom, and you guys have an internal mirror. What do you What do you guys use to do the the internal mirror syncing? Do you know the software? Is it called Bandersnatch? Or there's one other one where I forget the name. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, well we'll talk to that more about that in a second. Who here actually verifies and runs tested packages when they pull them down from the internet? Because you know no one's going to put bad packages up. 
Mahmoud shakes his head. So Shopkick's got a secure stack. Um, we're, we're, we're not perfect either, right? So we have a very arcane manual process where you download all the source tables today and put them into our sort of third party code system and it does run the unit tests. Most of the time people can turn it off really easily. And one thing Python doesn't have sorted like newer languages like Go and sort of have a bit more better. We don't have a unified testing framework. So, you know, you've got PyTest, you've then got, Mo what, what's Moshi's favorite again? Tox. And then you've got uh, Nose and, you know, each have their advantages and so you can do different things. So we're, our goal is to try and make this a little better and easier configurable for people so that they can actually run the test when they pull these things down. Another common thing I find when you download the source tables from pypi.python.org, a lot of people rip the, the unit tests out, keep packages smaller. Good idea, but sucks for when I want to actually run my unit test to see in my container if, if the code does what it should actually do. So that's a, a thing we didn't do. So there's a few reasons why we mirror. Uh, one, I don't want to be, I don't want to be down, but who's, who's heard of this lovely gentleman to the left here? Uh, who here uses JavaScript? And uh, I got left padded. So if you don't know what that is, left padded is where this gentleman got a little upset, so he deleted his package off the, off the uh, mirroring for, for JavaScript. Uh, and sorry? That's it, NPM, I forgot the term. Um, it's a lot harder to do on Python uh, with PyPI, but it is doable. Um, but we don't ever want to have that sort of um, problem. So we want to have the ability, so you can, with, with some of the mirroring software, you can turn off deleting. I've sort of done that because the number, the, you know, the, the gigabytes needed to mirror this for, for us is not worth the hassle. So I don't delete files. And also the speed and the, and the reliability, right? So now Instagram, every time they build a new virtual env to deploy, uh, hit the mirror. Every time we run some things to automatically try and update packages, we hit the mirror. I didn't really want to pound. I didn't think it was fair for all our automation to pound pypi.python.org. They have really good CDN, as I said, but still. Um, the other thing it gets, they let anyone put projects up there. You know, that dodgy guy, he's got code up there. Uh, a lot of us would have code up there. So we're still all blindly pulling in code. And I'm going to say, uh, talk about in a little bit um, what we've sort of done to try and negate that risk, but it's still there. Um, and then one of the extended things I want to do is we're going to start having our own mirrors internally um, to share co common libraries between different repositories. So we can build a wheel, upload it. Uh, Instagram uses a lot of common code from uh, Facebook's main code base that we call FB code and so forth. So we want to, want to be able to do that. Um, so what have we got today? So today at Facebook, it's kind of caveman-like because uh, we have to manually download the sources, uh, get all the dependencies ourselves, a nice hack that I found is using the pip download with no binary gives you all the sources and all the dependency sources. So that saves me a lot of time when I want to update, you know, fun things like requests or things that have like six different um, dependencies and I have to manually update them and then make sure I don't screw any other modules up. This is what I want to try and make the computer do because it's tedious and no one ever wants to do it. So, you know, our team, some people go, oh, the request library isn't up to date. Can you update it for us? Well, we, we don't want to do it either. So like, um, it's, it's a painful thing when you don't have the nice way to do PIP. I, I, Instagram used to be the same, but they would upload the tarballs to a HTTP mirror and they would use the fine links uh, kind of um, option with, with PIP. So if you don't know what fine links is, that you can have a directory, HTTP endpoint, or I think a local file path that you can point that at and it'll go and look at the source tarballs and work out what the modules are and, and try and install them. So Instagram was sort of in between where Facebook's main code base is and and uh, where, where we want to be. So why do we bother? Well, we wanted to make our lovely developers happy. Um, there was a nice animation there to make fun of Carl, who's here tonight, but I had to go PDF, so he gets scared. Um, but now in, in all our dev containers at Instagram, if you want to try a new version or try a new module, we can just do pip install and it hits our internal mirror, so it pulls it down nice and quickly. You can then import it into your dev code and start developing. Developers get happy. Uh, hopefully they see if there's bad code that they, they work that out and then they write their nice, nice unit test around it and we have happy devs. No one likes sticking around, pulling down the sources and pulling that in. So this is sort of our infrastructure. Now we're Facebook, so it's going to be over the top. Um, I have also a lot of this infrastructure that I don't have to look after and I can plug it in. Uh, I also have to cater for whenever you put any service up at Facebook, it has to be a data center has to be able to disappear. So that's why I'm showing that there's sort of two there. I actually have three because I want a third copy over in Sweden. So I have one on the, I have one, so Primeville, Oregon is our sort of West Coast data center. 
and Forest City, North Carolina. And then I also have another one over in Lulio, Sweden. Um, that's where the data freezes up there in the Arctic Circle. So basically in the middle there, you'll see I have a task. So every, the circles sort of represent a container. So think of it as Docker. Internally at Facebook, we call our system Tupperware. Um, it was, it's been around for a long, long time now. Uh, but it's basically LXCs with some nice wrappedness around it and scheduling abilities. So at the top there, we have a, a process that I've called Banda Wrapper, where I wrap the Banda Snatch library that's available on PyPI today. Um, and then I use that to mirror in all the projects, and I've now added a, a Thrift Upload API to it so that we can upload our own uh, wheels, if you build a wheel, so that you can have it in, in different mirrors. Um, and then if anyone knows, you just drop a pip.conf in your virtual env or in your, in your home directory, and you can point it at as many mirrors as you want. So then all, we write all our files to Gluster, which is a POSIX-like style file system, and I just have um, Nginx sitting in front of that. And ProxyGen is basically our, what, what our load balancer is at Facebook that runs the website. So we have ones for the actual website and ones for internal services. So I just stick it behind there. So I don't actually have to run the web uh, load balancers, which is good. I used to be in that team. I don't want to do it anymore. So that makes it nice and easy. So we have pypi.facebook.com. Uh, one funny lame thing is our, our split DNS for Facebook.com doesn't work, so you can actually dissolve the DNS name externally, but you won't be able to get there. So I have all stats about that. Uh, it's probably hard to see, but I sort of see how, how out of date my mirror is um, because it's a last modified tile and that. Uh, we're generally 30,000 seconds behind because of how slow the network file system is, um, but we only need to be up to date once or twice a day. so call it a day. I keep putting in little speed up hacks to thread more and whatnot for the IO on, on Bandersnatch. So you're going to get those uh, features for free if you go and use it. And then the rsync times is how I push the packages to the other mirrors. So generally I download it on one, verify it's all good, push it out to the world. And I get to see, you know, how busy PyPI has been. Sometimes this goes up to like four or 500 packages. And that means that there's been a new release for, or releases for, you know, 500 different packages, which is, uh, it's pretty, gets pretty busy. Monday morning is a lot busier. Um, so everyone gets excited on Monday morning. And Friday evening, uh, people really like to get their code out on a Friday evening, which is a great time to ship new code because, you know, what could go wrong? But wait, Cooper, you said there's security in this talk. Well, there is. Don't let that big snake get you. Um, we're still pulling in code and we don't have a way to sort of trust. So if someone changed the package from the mirror, my mirror is going to blindly sync it, right? It's, it's not smart enough to know or care. So I thought, right, we've got to do something. So I got talking. Uh, well, I actually saw a talk. Uh, at uh, I didn't get to go to PyCon this year. Um, but I saw a talk about PIP and someone, a uh, co-worker, sent it to me. And so I watched it. And he, he, he showed a very good new feature of PIP 8 that came out that very little people use. PIP 8 has the advantage to have in your requirements.txt, hashes of your choice. Now, I, we chose SHA-256 because, you know, the CPU time, who cares? It's not much different. So we went to a higher algorithm, but it can be MD5, it can be whatever you want, and you can do it like that. So there's a nice package called pip tools, which has a uh, pip compile binary that will come down, and you can have a, so you have two files now. You have the normal requirements.txt that you're used to with just the package names and the versions, and then it ingests that and spits out the hashes. Then when you try to build your virtual env, the hashes will be applied to the files. Now, why is there two here for click? One's the wheel and one's the source for the version you want. If there was two wheels that work or three, they'd all be there as well. You'll also see the handy thing that says via, and that means we've pulled in click for pip tools. So you've got a dependency that you haven't hard pinned. I strongly, strongly always suggest, and we're trying to get better at this at Instagram, we're pretty much all there now, um, to hard pin all your dependencies just so one day your app doesn't blow up. The virtual ems at, at Instagram are built uh, by a periodic job. Whenever someone lands a diff, it goes, oh, I need to build a new VM or when you're doing tests. And it tars it up. And then when we, the way we push it all to our production servers is over BitTorrent um, because we have a lot of servers. So like using PIP would probably make my uh, mirrors fall over. Um, so I didn't implement any of this. Uh, I had a lovely intern this summer to do that for me. So Matt's here. Uh, Matt got to do that for me. So he got to write uh, all the, so he wrote a wrapper around PIP tools because we have multiple different uh, requirements files, one for the dev containers, one for prod servers. You know, our, our prod server doesn't really need PUDB and, and certain things like that all the time. So we try and limit what goes out the prod. PDB is probably a bad example, but there's some other ones. 
So as I said, this is like the file that we're all sort of used to and people put comments on there and whatnot. Um, and here's some of the packages that Instagram use. You'll see the top one has a weird, a weird format. One of the things that sort of slowed Matt down is he had to rebuild a lot of our internal wheels because we weren't using a PEP 440 compliant versioning. So the nice thing now is we're all PEP 440 compliant versioning with all our packages at Instagram. And we turned this guy into this big mess. So humans don't look at this. This is for PIP. You stay looking at the requirements dot in. Um, but as I said, we're trying to get rid of like where we see via IPython um, and, and pinning all our versions. We're a little lazy on the dev file because I don't really care if IPython updates. It's only used by devs trying to like, you know, play with modules and see how they behave and things like that. So the dev, the dev one, we're not as strict on, but the things that go to prod, we try to hard pin everything. So where next? So as I said before, we have those mirrors there and I've got to upload API where the diff is uh, ready to land. I just haven't got there yet. And we want to have our own using extra index URLs. So probably in the near future, Instagram will have their own one. We'll probably have a generic one for all of Facebook and we may have one for WhatsApp, et cetera, et cetera, because not everyone needs um, all the packages that everyone puts up. Um, but it, it, uh, today, Instagram jumbles up a big wheel of death, I like to call it. It's about 700 megs, 800 megs or something, full of all the code they take from uh, Facebook's main FB code repository to talk to like our caching layer and, and all the other the databases and all the different things they do. So we're going to split that up into lots of small uh, wheels so that we can update things in a more sane fashion because when you bring in this big wheel, you get who knows how many bugs uh, from all the different things. So that's where we're sort of going. That was the big picture. And then the big one is getting rid of that manual process that I was talking about pulling down the sources uh, with Facebook's main source code repository. We call it FB code. We use a, buck, a build system called Buck that's open source. Uh, we'll be integrating Buck to talk to the mirrors and pull, pull the wheels down and install from the wheels rather than the, the current system that we have today. So. That'll be nice and it'll get a lot of, uh, it'll, it'll do two things hopefully. Uh, one, it'll stop people hassling us to upgrade modules because it can be very painful in our current system and hopefully get people doing it more um, so that we stay more up to date. And then in the, in the distant future, uh, the second part of my intern's uh, project was to make an auto updater for, for Instagram so that we find random packages that can be updated and then we throw the diff out. The diff will then go and run all, all Instagram's unit test and AB test it with the current production release. And then um, we know if it's safe or not to upgrade. So that's going live in tomorrow or the next day. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> so open source, yes. So everything I've done to pull the packages from outside in, um, I got commit rights to Bandersnatch because I kept putting up PRs and the guy's like, oh, I don't have time to like do all this. You can just have commit access. So I have commit access. Uh, I haven't pushed any of my, my diffs yet to the release. Well, that's not true. I convert, first thing I did is convert it to Python 3 because it hurts for me to use Python 2. Um, that was fun because it's all Unicode. So it was using Unicode strings everywhere. So I don't know who's converted Python 2 to 3 with Unicode everywhere. It's great fun. Um, and then, and then, but it's satisfying when you get there. And then uh, I sort of put in some like things to speed up sorting and, and some slow file operations because I have a very slow network file system underneath where if I run it on my you know, normal server with a normal hard drive, things are quick. So that's kind of annoying, but that's just how we go. And I also added like a bit puppet, bit bucket test pipe one. So now I don't, now I know I don't break things when I when I make changes. So if you want to mirror more, uh, speak to me. If you want to come and help contribute to Bandersnatch or help installing it, I've done it now a couple times. So I know all about it. So that's the thing. I'm a maintainer, as I said. Questions for me about mirroring, pip, all that things, all the good things. I've also done a diff to pip during this. Uh, during this uh, ordeal, which is fun because uh, pip doesn't respect the pip.conf if it wants to run itself update. Who's, here, who's ever sat there and waited for pip while it's just hanging and you're like, what's it doing? It's generally trying to check if there's a newer version of itself. Um, and today that is hard coded to hit pypi.python.org. Hopefully in the next release my diff will land and it will respect the config file. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, py that's Python packaging and uh, uh, I will say another thing is Please try and just do your setup.py right so that the metadata is nice. There's so many packages, the metadata is just garbage and the way Pip, the things that Pip has to do to work out the dependencies and everything is, is interesting. All right. <laughs> Questions for Cooper. He knows a lot. He's an expert. We got an expert in the room. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, <laughs> but, well, for, for the record, since you were asking before, at PayPal, we uh, didn't do uh, 
really mirroring in that same way. We vendored, we, we encouraged vendoring and explicit uh, checks. Uh -huh. At eBay, we ran DevPI, um, which I'm Yeah, that's the other one, yeah. Yeah, I'm curious about your thoughts on DevPI. I haven't played with it at all. I looked at it and it sort of said it caches, like a, it's a look through cache. So basically it's a proxy. And I didn't want that. I wanted, I don't know if you could tell it to save. I haven't looked at it enough, but as soon as I saw it, it was like a, so DevPI apparently sits in the middle and you point it at that. And then if it doesn't have the package, it'll go and grab it from PyPI and then save it for you. I didn't know if it saved it to disk or it just put it in memory temporarily. Do you know if it, which way it, it does it, save the disk? Okay. It so saves the disk and you can do layers, right? So teams can have their own like, you know, layer, individuals can have their own layer. It's pretty, it's pretty fancy. And it's by the same guy who wrote PyTest and Talk. Uh, okay. same, same team, I should say. Okay, uh, cool. So it's, it's cool as a result, but I'm interested in the yeah. Bandersnatch thing as well. Yeah, so like the, the reason I chose this is I wanted to be distinctly cut off from the outside world. Mm -hmm. And like basically if PyPI is down and like some Instagram engineer wants a new module, like we shouldn't have to care. So I just wanted to mirror everything. So that's why I found Bandersnatch. It, it worked when I tested it. So Absolutely. I that's yellowed. Cool. I'll talk about Shopkick's thing, but first, Jayla has yeah. a question. Oh, I answered the question about DevPI. You had a question about DevPI. Okay. Uh, do you guys run that here at Core? No. no. Yeah, I didn't give it too much time. I looked at both just from the specs and read a bit of the code. And I think DevPI was Python 2 as well. So I was like, uh, you're not winning me there. Yeah, uh, you, got it. you got me there. That's, you got to take that one up with, uh, what's his name? Holger. Holger Kreck. There it is. Where's he right. work? Oh, wait. He works in Germany. Oh, he's Germany. This guy, the Bandersnatch guy is a German freelancer as well. They, they I don't know why these mirroring guys want to, are all freelancers in Germany. <laughs> that's a good question. They don't trust PyPI, that's it. <laughs> uh, all right. Questions about, yes. So, how often do you find bad packages? And by bad, I mean not just because they break your code, but they're actually malicious. And what do you do about them? Yeah. So how that, do you prevent that? So the, yeah, we don't do a lot to prevent that. That's up to the so you as a developer. Like we say at Facebook, and I, I don't know what Instagram's official thing is, but I've been at Facebook longer, so I know that. Facebook is it's on and we do this with a lot of things at Facebook. It's on the developer to if you pull external code in to validate it. And if it's all logged who pulls in what and who commits what. And if it ends up being bad and you did some due diligence, like you actually ran unit tests and test it and that, you sort of like forgiven if it wasn't like we're, we're a forgiving culture we don't have a blame culture and so we would just delete it clean up and then do whatever we needed to do after it we've never had during the time i've been there or i haven't seen uh, a security breach for any code brought in um it's still scary all the time like it, it, it it's like one thing that scared me i i worked out the other day uh if, if anyone's ever used lib uh, uv loop sorry for async io I saw that the uh, Instagram was using the pre-compiled version from from PyPI, and we didn't build it ourselves. And I was amazed because you know all our boxes are CentOS, so like linking with old school CentOS libraries, I was surprised it didn't blow up. But I found out how it doesn't. It, it it bundles LibUV in in with it, so it's a very modern LibUV, so it links pretty well. So files like things like that you see all the time. Um, so like part of the sort of next plans is we want to sort of stop people using the packages directly off PyPI and creating an easy way to build it in our build environment. And we're going to try and highly, highly discourage not running the unit test so that we don't see anything weird. And also like, I generally have a quick look over the unit test, but I know a lot of people don't. A lot of people just want to use it and get their hands dirty and you know ship new awesome feature. I know, I know that at Bloomberg, uh, Noah Kantrowitz was saying, not this year's PyBay, but last year's, yeah. that they actually do have a static analysis tool that checks for symbols and stuff like that. Oh, wow. like it goes all the way down to the binary before it will like certify the container. So I was, yeah, it'll be curious. It'll be interesting to see what static analysis you come up with. Ukush, he wants to say something. All right, here we go. We're doing something. Yeah, so um, <laughs> we're running tests of the third-party packages. And by doing this, I found out that actually we do check if, um, if some code does something malicious because um, one of the DNS libraries that we use from PyPI was simply just doing stupid lookups of like a.com, b.com, c.com, d.com, and like seven of them are on our blacklist of malicious pages that you just cannot access. So like, you know, like we had security on us like right away, like what are you doing? Is that, is that because it hit the proxy server? <laughs> And they yeah. throw it for proxy server yeah, logs. Exactly. Yeah, we have a lot. You, every now and then you get a weird task at Facebook from some security person going, 
did you really mean to do this? And it will say something or did you do this with your account or is it okay that someone else logged into your account? Because sometimes I put bugs through and I click, yes, it's okay for a dev to log in as me. So if you want to hack Facebook, make sure you have low test coverage. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, you have a question. Uh, at the beginning, you said uh, there were like many packages on PyPI. Um, do you know how many you actually use at Facebook? Ah, oh, yeah, probably only about 250 to 300 of them, probably. Yeah, that's a very low percentage, but I don't, I don't know. Like the Dev PI sounds an interesting idea. How it caches the only ones you use. I don't know. Um, as I said, like we have a lot of hard drives at Facebook, so it's probably not worth my time caring. Um, just sync everything, care if we use it later, kind of. It's lazy, I know, but 600 gig to us is, like, it's only about 600, 700 gig. We don't really care. Is, but, I'm going to give you the lazy response there. But I know for, like, a, like if you're a startup, like, it's, Dev PI sounds a lot better for you. You just have your, like, container with 20 gig and mirror what you need. Uh, this might be sort of a newbie question. Yeah. Um, so uh, I do use be closer. Anaconda. Oh, yep. uh, and uh, like, is there any difference between Anaconda and Swift? Uh, yeah, he does have my. Just, I don't know if it was on. Uh, so I'll repeat the. I'll repeat the question. It's all good. Um, so the gentleman here's a, a user of Anaconda. If you don't know, I don't know a whole lot about Anaconda, but Anaconda has its own packaging system. I think it uses similar things to like PIP for the metadata and generation like that. So I don't know how it finds the packages or what the mirrors are laid out. Like, Carl, do you have any idea if Anaconda uses a similar? No. Nah. Yeah. I, I do. I mean, it, yeah. has, it has its own dependency specification yeah. and so forth, and it actually resolves those specifications all ahead of time. Uh -huh. So you don't necessarily, it has its own metadata, basically. You don't need to incrementally sort of recursively download things. Yeah. You just like this set and go. Um, but the interesting thing about Anaconda is that it doesn't necessarily just depend on Python packages. Yeah. You know, like, so, uh. Uh, yeah, like you can basically be like Conda installing Nginx or Conda installing, uh, you know, uh, what's that, libblast. So they, so they just package up anything that needed for science, basically. Absolutely. Right, yeah. uh, or in the case of PayPal, we switched to Conda for production uh, installs and stuff. So, yeah. Um, at, it would be wow. interesting to, to know what that, like, 300 packages that you guys use are. But if you're trying to reduce your security pr footprint, you probably don't want to publish I'm probably not going to share that. Um, uh, I like my job. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it would be that bad. You saw some of them before. Like, sure. They, but they, I, I purposely chose, like, very benign click. And well-known kind of things that most people, I Python, like no shit. <laughs> Armin's like, gonna go rogue, <laughs> and he's gonna take down. Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, I've met Armin, and I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, that, I mean, I'm sure there's still a lot to discuss. Packaging distribution is a big, big topic. So, but for now, let's give a round of applause for Cooper.